Will the new inductees please stand? Will you all join me in this prayer of dedication for these beautiful souls this morning? Here's my heart, an altar of the living Spirit Almighty, a tribute to the creator of all that is. One God, one infinite intelligence, one presence, one power, one love, one joyous expression. Its name is Curtis. Its name is Rosie. Its name is Jennifer. Its name is Frank. Its name is Sherilyn. Its name is Diane Jean. Its name is Bevar. Its name is Bevenisha. Its name is Shelley. Its name is Lorna. Its name is the name of everyone within the sound of my voice. And it is the name of all life kind. Because all life honors and glories this one. And so in this consciousness, I dedicate those who stand before us this morning. I dedicate their lives to the spread of truth, knowing that their light so shine that others may see and seek to find that light within themselves. And I know like the flowers they hold, each of them blooms to the honor and glory of God, right where they are planted. What a joy it is to have them walk the spiritual path with those of us who have joined this family and who walk together, one God, one mind, one love, forever and ever. And so I release my word to law and know that as I have spoken, these souls are dedicated as all of us rededicate ourselves to the service of the light and to the honor and glory of God. I let go and let this be the radiant truth, giving thanks that it is so, and so it is. Namaste, friends. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you. I'll just take the Wow. Breathe. There was, a, there was a, an affirmation in this morning's creative thought reading which I loved. I communicate and the divine self in each person responds. Can we say that? I communicate and the divine self in each person responds. I work for God and with God. I work for God and with God. I am a temple of light. I am a temple of light. I am a temple of truth. And my altar is faith. Friends, the banner which forms the backdrop on the wall behind me proclaims a joyous welcome to our spiritual home here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And I have borrowed the words welcome home for our homecoming this morning. And it is, a, it is the title of my encouragement as I call my Sunday messages. Those words seem so appropriate for our first time visitors, for those of us who have been here for years, and they seem especially and particularly meaningful for our new members this morning. And the inviting picture of the gateway into our meditation garden, which was done by Tony Henry, I believe, a few moons ago, that picture echoes the beautiful words with which Dr. Ernest Holmes, who founded our great teaching in 1927, welcomes us to his magnum opus, The Science of Mind. We call it the textbook. On the very first page of this spiritual masterpiece, Holmes invites us all who hunger and thirst after righteousness to enter and be filled. It is titled, Peace Be Unto Thee, Stranger. And I would like to begin my encouragement by reading it to you. Peace be unto thee, stranger. Enter 
and be not afraid. I have left the gate open, and thou art welcome to my home. There is room in my house for all. I have swept the hearth and lighted the fire. The room is warm and cheerful, and you will find comfort and rest within. The table is laid, and the fruits of life are spread before thee. The wine is here also. It sparkles in the light. I have set a chair for you where the sunbeams dance through the shade. Sit and rest and refresh your soul. Eat of the fruit, drink of the wine, for all, all is yours, and you are welcome. So as I said, my message is titled simply, Welcome Home. It's how I felt when I first came to this temple 33 years ago, and it is how I feel every time I drive through those gates. Many people have told me that it's the way they feel when they enter these doors, either physically or in consciousness. We have some people who live abroad and they tune into our Sunday messages, or they just feel that they belong and that this is their, their home, their spiritual home. And so friends, welcome home. Welcome to our spiritual community, our Sangha, as it is known in the Eastern teachings. We are a, a very beautiful building, aren't we? Set in exquisite gardens. But as the author Dennis Merritt Jones explains in his book, The Art of Being, Sangha, spiritual community, is not a building. It's a consciousness held by a collective group that welcomes, celebrates, and honors you just the way you are. Mary Jones says, and I quote, you will know it because it's as if you have walked into a wall of love immersing you in it in the most amazing way. So I want you to feel every time you come on Sunday that you are being welcomed by this, this, this awesome love that is here to embrace you. And friends, when you immerse yourself in the caring and compassion of your spiritual community, you do not become lost in it. You don't lose your identity or your individuality. For although involvement in community changes us in significant ways, you will find that it enables you to fulfill your purpose in your own unique way. For you see, we need one another to enhance God's experience of loving itself. God is actually loving itself by means of every one of us. Yes, we may be able to create this experience, I know, by working on our own in a secluded environment, but ultimately, I really believe there can be no greater place for awakening to our spiritual magnificence than in spiritual communion with others. I'd like to invite Dr. Winston, fondly known as Freddie Clark, a long-standing member of our spiritual family and a member of our board of trustees, to share with us what being a member of the Temple of Light has meant to him over the years. Dr. Freddie? Let us welcome him. This has got to be a stand-up and deliver session. <laughs> First, I want to say welcome to our inductees. And let me not be selfish if I say a special welcome to you, Jennifer. Welcome. Frank, welcome. Welcome all. What can I say? Yeah. There comes a time in life when we must examine ourselves, when we must examine our lives, when we must ask questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What is God? Who is God? Unless we examine our lives and come to some serious understanding and attain the answers to these questions, we are faced with misery and despair. And it is then that the teacher appears 
And it is then that the teacher appeared in my own life as I walked out of Mayberry Investments one day and a beautiful lady named Elma Lumsden says, why not come to church on Sunday? I have not stopped. I came with a notebook and used that notebook for many years. There's a quote which goes this way, empty the boat of your life, O oh man. When empty, ye shall swiftly say. When free of all passion and harmful prejudice, you're on your way to nirvana. Nirvana being that heavenly experience of heightened consciousness. It is in this place and within these walls that I have learned the important lessons of relieving myself of passion, bigotry, and prejudice. That I have learned to look unto one and to one alone for my bread, my meat, my water, and my wine. This is the value of membership of this Temple of Light to me. And so each day I know that I'm here to live that presence, to work with that presence, to do the will of him that sent me, and to do and know, as my dear friend Yvonne Carty just said, to know he restored my soul. And so, welcome to you, and I know that you will say with me, two things do I ask of thee, O God, deny me them not before I die. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but feed me with food convenient to me, lest I become rich and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I become poor and take the name of the Lord my God in vain. And so it is. No more message, no. <laughs> Dr. Freddie. Wow. Wow. What a privilege it is to walk the path with this family. Friends, it is really here that we discover that the true temple is in our own consciousness. And that if we open the gates of the temple, we may advance spiritually. As Dr. Holmes puts it, quote, because human beings are individualized expressions of God consciousness, they must consciously enter the temple. And that's what you have done this morning. You have made a conscious step into a new phase of your life, which is undergirded and supported by God. There are many teaching stories of this divine union that one experiences when one actively and consciously seeks God. And the one I particularly like is a Sufi story told in Tales of the Dervishes by Idris Shah. Shah tells a delightful story of a stream that started in the mountains and ran down to the land into the valley below. The stream passed all kinds of landscapes until it reached a desert. When the stream arrived at the desert, it found that no matter how hard it tried, it could not get across. It was being absorbed into the desert sand. Despite appearances, the stream was intent on fulfilling what it thought was its destiny. It was certain that there was a way across the desert landscape. As the stream contemplated its challenge, the quiet voice of the desert whispered, the wind crosses the desert all the time. Aroused from its deep thought, the stream retorted, well, that's easy enough for the wind. The wind can fly. 
I, on the other hand, must make my way as I always have. The desert spoke again. By continuing as you always have, you cannot get across. You can continue as you have, but that will lead to becoming absorbed by the sand or by becoming a marsh. But there is another way. There is another way. You can allow yourself to be carried over by the wind. The stream questioned this deeply. How can the wind carry me? The desert replied, you must allow yourself to be absorbed by the wind. The idea was completely unacceptable to the stream. For either way, it would be absorbed. It would lose its individuality, and having lost it, how would it ever know itself again? The desert patiently addressed these concerns, explaining that it was the function of the wind to take up water, carry it over the desert, and then allow it to fall as rain. And once fallen, the water would then again become a stream. The stream remained skeptical. <laughs> How can this be true, it asked. The desert responded, it does not matter if you believe the truth to be true. In fact, if you do not believe, you, re you may remain here. So slightly relieved at having an option, the stream said, ah, then I remain here and continue to be the stream that I always have been. The desert sighed, <laughs> no, my friend, no. That is the one thing that cannot be. Whether you go or stay, you cannot remain as you are. Remain here, and at best, you will become a marsh. And that might be all right, but it is certainly not a stream. Since seeing the stream's disheartened confusion, the desert continued, you know there is an essential part of you That essential part of you is your true identity. And however that essential part, which never changes, no matter what form or what path you take, however you go, that essential part remains the true and perfect you. Upon hearing this, the stream felt an inner stirring it knew instinctively that all the desert had said was true. And with that acknowledgement came the slightest sense of recognition. There was an essential part that had traveled with the wind before. And then a slightly stronger thought emerged for the stream. Though it may not be obvious, I think this is the right thing to do. With that, the stream raised itself as vapor into the welcoming arms of the wind, and the wind gently carried it upward and forward. How long or how far they traveled, the essential part of what had been the stream did not know. But eventually, the wind softly allowed the water to fall. And this time, as the water began to take its new form, it recalled the details of the experience. With sweet reflection, it knew its true identity. It awakened to its spiritual magnificence. If you think about it, this delightful Sufi tale, my friends, can have many meanings and be interpreted on many levels. When I first read it, I saw myself as a stream that had encountered the desert of negative thinking and a feeling of separation from my source. This teaching and the people who I met here lifted me up and gently carried me across the arid wasteland of gossip, judgment, and negative perspectives on life. I found this temple a safe place in which I learned how love, law, and beauty interact in the world that I am helping to create. I'm so glad Dr. Elmer was checking uh, Dr. Freddie outside um, the bank. She did the same for me. She said, why don't you come regularly? Because I came the first Sunday with my friend, Larry Chang. And I just felt, yes, 
I belong here. One of the things that I loved was that she, she was quite irreverent. She, she told jokes and she laughed at them herself before anybody else did. I thought, yes, I can, I can, I can deal with this. But the other key element of the story for me is the matter of identity. And Dr. Freddy said, you know, there comes a time when you ask yourself, who am I and what is my relationship with the great I am? The stream thought of itself as a stream and had definite ideas about what it was and what it wasn't, what it was capable of doing and what it was afraid to do. Doesn't this sound like a place so many of us have been to before in our own spiritual quest? And like so many of us, when confronted with a challenge that threatened our very existence, the stream's old paradigm, what we thought of ourselves, the old construct of reality proved absolutely useless. It was only when the stream allowed itself to experience an expanded identity as part of something bigger than itself that it was able to discover its beautiful relationship with the wind and was reconstituted as a new and liberated expression of its true nature. This, for me, is the inestimable value of participating in spiritual communion with others of like mind. Some are different from me as the wind is from the water, but all essentially divine and created by that one awesome thing we call God. So when I asked how we can comfortably live through these times without being destabilized by the magnitude of change that we encounter, I came across a, a, a piece by Dr. Jean Houston, the internationally recognized researcher in human development, who said, and I quote, if we practice our spiritual disciplines as part of a community of like-minded people who support and empower each other, we can anchor and stabilize ourselves during these times of increasing complexity. During these times, we must grow or die. Like the stream, we cannot remain the same. Growth in this context means explorations into God and your relationship with it. As harbingers of, new human, of a new humanity, we undertake the joyous responsibility of creating a more enlightened culture and living daily life reconnected and recharged by our source." Unquote. Houston maintains that participating in community awakens a powerful life current that cleanses body, mind, and spirit. Quote, practicing the contemplative arts, especially in a supportive community, enables us to decondition negative habits by contacting our higher nature every day. In this way, we can give up having PhDs in our own pathologies and take advanced degrees in joy and creativity. But that is what we are here to express. Friends, I believe that when our founding minister, Dr. Elmer Lumsden, was inspired to name our center the Temple of Light, spirit was articulating through her the mission of lighting the way to joyous living and giving a divine assignment to us all who have embraced this teaching. In a very real sense, each of us is a Temple of Light. Each of us is a center of spiritual living from which love, light, joy, and creativity emanate to touch everyone and everything we encounter into wholeness. And so this brings me to your assignment. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to take some time this evening, today, don't let today pass without doing it, to sit quietly, close your eyes, and go within. And in this quiet time, create in your mind the picture of your temple, making it as beautiful as you wish and making the interior as sacred as you can. Imagine a temple as so beautiful and the most beautiful setting that you can imagine. And when you have a clear mental picture of your temple, set your intention that everyone who encounters your temple will be blessed and healed and uplifted. And then simply silently affirm, peace be unto all who enter here. Let us affirm, I am a temple of the living God. Together, 
I am a temple. I am the harbinger of a new humanity. I am the harbinger of a new I am a temple of light. I am a temple of truth. All, all are welcome. To your neighbor say, welcome to my temple. Your presence here is a blessing. Namaste. Welcome to my temple. Your presence here is a blessing. Namaste. Welcome to my temple. Your presence here is a blessing. Namaste. A peace environmental and global justice activist named simply Starhawk speaks this of the value of community. She says, and I quote, somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us, eyes will light as we enter, and voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to the work that needs to be done, arms to hold us when we falter. Community, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can truly be free. My blessing for you then today, my spiritual family, and every day, is for the blossoming of your full potential in our spiritual community. May every moment we enjoy here in holy communion with each other bring a new revelation of your own unique and awesome beauty, as well as the fathomless beauty of every soul you encounter on life's path. May such revelations nurture your spiritual growth May your life light the way to joyous living for everyone on the path. For as Ernest Holmes said, and I quote, our temple is the self, our altar is faith, our sacrifice is a renouncing of negation. Our gift, which is acceptable, is the supreme affirmation, I am that I am, besides which there is none other. Temple family and friends, we have left the gate open and there is room in our house for all. Namaste.